We're co-inheritors with him. Everything that he inherited from God, the Bible says that we're joint heirs with him. We get too. And so you either believe that or you believe how you feel. Hey friends, come on in. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky. My friends, Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer will be along momentarily, I promise. You see, today is a special episode. We've talked a lot about how important it is to think about what you're thinking about. Our thoughts impact every aspect of our our lives. And we've heard so much from all of you, our friends, on this topic. You're asking for more help with this, and we are here today to give it to you. You see, it's not an instant endeavor. It takes work to renew your mind and practice. So we're talking about defeating negative thoughts, and we're doing it in a very special way. We're going to share moments from your favorite podcast episodes to face this issue from three different angles. Stopping those negative negative thoughts, how we think about ourselves, that is such a big one, and getting dressed for the battle in our mind. I'll even share how the Lord helped me upgrade my helmet of salvation. Did you know you can do that? You can. Well, that is part of the discussion on today's Talk It Out. First up, here's Joyce explaining how the mind is the battlefield. Probably our mind gives us more trouble than anything. You know why that is? Because the mind is the battleground that Satan comes and attacks us on. Thus, the book that I wrote, The Battlefield of the Mind. If you can win the battle in your mind, then you can win the battle for life. Where the mind goes, the man follows. So an obedient mind will lead to an obedient life. A disobedient mind will lead to a disobedient life. So if you made a decision last night or at any time in in your life, I want to not just be a Christian, I want to be an obedient Christian. I want to be a child of God who wants to do what's right and does what's right and glorifies God. I don't want to be mediocre and, and compromising and just see what all I can get by with and hope I can still sneak in the back door of heaven. I want to love God with my whole heart and do it right. And I'm sure that most of you have made that decision. But a lot of times people make that decision, but it never happens for them because although they made a good decision and they have a good desire, they never change their mind. They still think junk. They have stinking thinking. And anytime we have stinking thinking, we're going to have a stinking life. So, amen. Is that right? So the devil constantly attacks our thoughts. And, but believe it or not, in the beginning, if you first start trying to cooperate with the Spirit of God to think right things, you are going to feel like you're in a battle from daylight till dark. And you just get so tired of fighting the enemy all day, you don't hardly know what to do. But I can tell you, if you stand your ground, it gets better and better and better and better and better. And, you know, although my mind still gets attacked, There's always things that the enemy is suggesting to my mind. But after all these years now in practice, I mean, I recognize them really quickly. And it's not that difficult at all to just say, nope, I'm not going there. And I'm asking you tonight to take an inventory of your thoughts. What's been on your mind lately? If you're depressed, what have you been thinking about? If you're angry, what have you been thinking about? If you're bitter, what have you been thinking about? (laughs) We can have our mind renewed according to the Word of God. Let's take just a second and look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Amen. Amen. So how are we changed? First, our mind has to change, and then our life changes. We don't think the way that we used to think, but we begin to actually believe this book and think like God thinks. My goodness, do you know how many problems people have because of the junky thoughts they think about themselves? I'll tell you what, 
you're looking at a woman, I would be petrified anymore to think bad, junky thoughts about myself because I know it so displeases and so dishonors God. He sent his only son to die for you. He loved you enough to pay an awful price for you. And who do you think you are to have bad, terrible, junky thoughts about yourself? If God loves you, then you can love you. Amen? I said, if God loves you, then you can love you. You don't think, you don't need to think I'm stupid. You think I have the mind of Christ. You don't need to think I can't do anything. You look at Romans 12 and you say, I'm gifted and talented. There's something that I can do and it's important to the people in the body of Christ that I fulfill my part. Quit letting the devil drag you down through wrong thoughts that don't agree with the word of God. I have the mind of Christ. I'm gifted, I'm talented, I'm anointed. Learn how to talk like God talks. Learn how to see yourself the way He sees you and your life will change radically. Ooh, that's good stuff. So good. good. Yeah. It is, it's so good. If God loves you, then you can love you. <laughs> I mean, there are so many people right now whose minds are being blown by this whole process mm -hmm. that if I can believe God's word for someone else, I can believe it for me too. Yeah. I mean, those things are big. It's true. And how many of our our day is and our our thoughts during the day is spent on if only I could do this like my friend here or if only yeah. I look yeah. like this then I could have this or all of that and yeah, we we'll, we could still go to heaven, but man, are we missing out on all the things God has for yeah. us because we're too busy worrying about other people. Worrying yeah. about other people, comparing ourselves yeah. to other people, worrying about if we're good enough, worrying about if we're lovable, if we're this, if we're that. And honestly, like Joyce said, it's an insult, you know, yeah. to God and to the price that, that Jesus paid on the cross to, you know, really mm -hmm. like doubt. Like she should be petrified yeah. <laughs> to even yeah. think ne negative thoughts about herself, man. I, I mean, and I have to war mm -hmm. with that. And me and my daughter talk about it all the time. And it's like... We cannot allow ourselves to think negatively about yeah. ourselves, no matter what phase we're in, no matter if you have a huge right. zit on your forehead or on your nose, no matter <laughs> if you ate a lot, you know, mm -hmm, over the yeah. summer or during quarantine and you gained some weight or whether you look your best. Either way, it can't be based off of situations. It has to just be based on the fact that God loves me. So yeah. I need to love myself. There's always something wrong with Absolutely. every we one of us. always find something exactly. wrong. Exactly. It's not like it's hard to find a reason for anyone to think poorly about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it that way, that we're God's chosen creation. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about ourselves in a negative way. We're talking badly about who God made us to be. Right. His masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. And He doesn't want that for us, and we shouldn't want that for Him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there, there's so much uh, in all of this. Yeah. I, I've had um, a really hard week. Like, I've just... I don't know why things happen the way they do sometimes, but it's just been a really difficult week. And I, I think probably part of it is getting ready to talk about this, you know? Um, not that God does that to us, but that Satan will throw things in our path. And instead of going a negative way, you know, I've had to think about this a lot yeah. and to say, okay, what am I going to do instead of dwelling on these hard things that are happening right now? Um, so real practical, like you said, Erin, just mm -hmm. say stop and do something different. One of the things for some of the things that I've been dealing with this week is I am not going to go to Google mm. and look up a lot of stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that can take you down a really dark path really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So make some good practical decisions mm -hmm. to what you let into your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that makes a big difference. Yeah, what are huge. we dwelling on? Am, am I looking up everything that could possibly go wrong? Or am I reading God's word and trusting what he says mm -hmm. that he is there, that he will never leave me, he will never forsake me, even when I don't see an outcome, mm -hmm. yeah. even when... I'm fearful mm -hmm. that it's not him that puts fear in me, right. you know, combating all of that. So, you know, one of the things for me is Psalm 139, so beautiful. I love it so much. And it's, I when I start to have those thoughts, one of the first things I'll say is, God, search me. You know mm -hmm. me, check my anxious thoughts and lead me, you know, help me to think the right way. Yeah. And that that always helps me a lot because I know it's... It's not even just I have to change my thoughts. If I ask God to help me, He will 
yeah, yeah, help I'll walk me well, through yeah. it. So that that's one of the ones that that's really been helping me, yeah, and that's good. just through through some of these hard things um, that are happening, you know, outside of myself. There are always hard things that are happening inside of yourself at the same time. Yeah. So you can you can have those thoughts like, um, you know, rather than I'm rejected, right? We all have those thoughts like, you ever feel like you're just not loved well enough, mm-hmm. or you know, you just feel on the outside of whatever. To go back to God. You think of me so many times every day that it outnumbers the grains of mm-hmm. sand and the number of stars in the sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when I have those things that that I'm not thinking well, then I I go back and I remember that God has put the fruit of the spirit in me. Yeah. Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, mm-hmm. gentleness, self-control, but I don't yeah. feel like I have any of those things. I can start instead of thinking about, oh, obviously I have no self-control because I just did this. Yeah. I can begin confessing mm-hmm. God promises because the spirit lives in me that I have these things yeah. and God help me to walk in them. Yeah. So it's so practical. It is. I mean, there are so many things that you can write down. Mm-hmm. This is not an ethereal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. This is daily hitting the road and doing it kind of stuff. I didn't realize that until a couple of years ago when I started dealing with anxiety, which I've shared before I've never dealt yeah. with. And so that's what what drew me to reading Battlefield of the Mind again because I I needed something and I I needed some direction. Like I knew I knew the the word of God would be my source, but I just it was it was too much. So I needed some like specific direction of here's how to do this. Yeah. And so reading that book with those practical steps, um, a couple of times I've had like panic attacks and it's usually during the night. I was with Ginger one time we were traveling on a trip and I I text her the next morning and said, I, I, I'm going to be late because I just had a panic attack last night. I just need a minute. Um, and it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm, our friends are going to understand this. If you had it, like a shaking, I couldn't, my mind was racing, my heart mm-hmm. was racing. And so all I could do was quote scripture. I remember, and I called, I went to the bathroom. It was in the middle of the night because um, I had a roommate. So I huddled up in the bathroom and I was sobbing. And I said, Mike, I can't I can't stop shaking. I can't stop like what's happening. And so he prayed for me. And then I turned on worship music and my headphones and I just like took deep breaths. And I just had to, I had to keep thinking the thoughts of God. I had to keep remembering that I have the mind of Christ and yeah. that this is, this will pass. But, um, you know, the verse in Psalms, it's, um, you give me, I will lay down to sleep. I can't I'm telling you all these things, and I can't remember the verses. Psalm four eight: In peace, I will lay down to sleep for you, O Lord. Keep me safe. Yeah. And so, I should be able to remember that. I've said it so many times, but just over and over again to replace that negative thought that's coming in. That's me saying no. Right. This is the thought I'm going to think on. So, you know what I love about what you're sharing? You're doing it right now, and you did it then. That morning, you called me and you let me know, and you told me, and. I could pray about it. Mm-hmm. I could understand a little bit. You know, when you keep something secret, mm-hmm. when you hide it, mm-hmm. then it gives it so much more power. That's so true. And Aaron took the power away from it mm-hmm. by saying, there's nothing, there's no shame in this. This is what I'm dealing with. I just want you to know, will you pray for me? Yeah. And by telling everyone else mm-hmm. that there's no shame in anything that they're dealing with. And I... I just think that's beautiful that you did that. I appreciate you saying that because on the flip side, I thought, I do not want to tell my boss that I'm going to be late to this meeting because I can't get my act together. And I thought, no, this is where I am in this moment. Ginger knows me. She she knows I'm, I'm going to do my best, but I need to be honest and I need to let my friend in. And it made it made a huge difference. Even calling Mike at two in the morning, I thought, I don't want to bother him. He's got the kids. I don't want to wake him up. But in that moment, I needed to tell somebody else I'm not okay, yeah. and I need you to help me through this. Just like you were saying, I, you need to be able to to talk to somebody because yeah. like, it did. It took the power away. It's so amazing when you say stuff out loud that that power of what's racing in here right. diminishes. It changes your thoughts. It's so yeah. crazy how Christ, a lot of Christians tend to feel like that's a bad thing. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. to acknowledge that you have a moment of weakness. I wanted to share something else with you guys. Um, <clears throat> this past Easter was a was big for me. And not because of any 
amazing production or any magical or, you know, Holy Spirit filled worship session. It was Mm -hmm. because after Good Friday and I've shared a lot about, you know, what's going on in my personal life as it it pertains to infidelity and divorce, getting, you know, getting served papers and now being, you know, figuring out life by myself. And that's hard stuff. It's a lot of hard stuff through a a, a pandemic (laughs) as well. And so anyways, I'm saying that because this past I was thinking right the day before Good, um, Good Friday, um, it was just a hard, hard day for me. I was just thinking about a whole bunch of stuff, got several emails, more things about the situation came out. Like it's it's unfortunate when it just layers and layers of things that come out. And finally, I just really started le- th- reading about the cross and Jesus, you know, dying mm-hmm. on the cross. And then I read the part in the scripture where I was talking about how they like the people were casting lots for mm-hmm. Jesus's clothes, like, you know, and then Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I'm like, hold up. They did know what they were doing. They were literally casting lots. Like, no, and he's like uh-huh. while you were dying, they should have known better. Like, they gave you vinegar when you needed water. Like yeah. they knew. And he's like, yeah, they knew. But they didn't know that they were a part of the big plan. So I immediately mm. then was like, man, well, thank you to those people. And so what that did was help me. And hopefully this helps you, even with the way that you think about a horrible situation. I began to thank my ex. Wow. Hmm. I called him by his name. Thank you. And I began to thank the mistress. <laughs> I said her name out loud. Like I began to thank them and I felt a release where hmm. I'm like, I don't have to find out any more stuff. I don't have to know anything else, but thank you because they're a part of a big plan that I have never even seen before. I haven't even seen it, but what they've wow. done has what I thought was detriment. What I thought was detriment is actually catapulting me to whatever's coming next. So Okay, that's that is big. Huge. I think when you start recognizing the fact that you can th- think about what you're thinking about, it's it's harder in the beginning to learn to to change the way you think. So, like you said, Ginger, this the circumstance is still the same, but I can think about it differently. It is it's harder in the beginning, but once you practice and once you begin to see God working and you see this yeah. whatever that was, you see God take that story for and turn it into something amazing, then it makes mm-hmm. the process even easier. What we're talking about works. Yeah. yeah. And so that that changes things and slowly it it becomes second nature mm-hmm. instead of um you know in the beginning it's like oh wait a minute. Yeah. I I need to do this. And uh-huh. that's good. That's a great place to yeah, start. Absolutely. But there will come a time where it's second nature that this is what I need to think instead of what I'm thinking. It's mm-hmm. almost always the opposite, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a scripture in the Bible that is the opposite of what you're thinking. <laughs> yep. If you're thinking you're worthless, God tells you you are valuable. Mm-hmm. If you are afraid, God tells you He is there with you. You don't have to be afraid. Like even sitting here on this podcast, We've been doing this for almost two years, and even still, I'll get here, and I'm like, Aaron, who do you think you are that you should be sitting here talking with Joyce Meyer and these women who are brilliant? You have nothing to say. Like, uh, eventually, they're going to figure out you're just making it up. (laughs) So... No, this is not like a feel sorry for me. This is me just being honest. Okay. So even as like yeah, an adult, I think we we've all, have all those felt moments. that at different times. Yeah, we've, we've all kind of been there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you it's have just, a lot of value, though. I just want you I, know. But this is a preface. I, to say, yeah, I don't I know need you, you to validate me. Okay. All right. I know you love me. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can tell me later. <laughs> I'll tell you later. I love yeah. just watching this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get there. Don't worry about it. But I think we all experience that in our lives every day. You are put in situations, even if you know that you're supposed to be there, Right. you still are, um, the enemy knows where to get you and when to hit you and you question yourself. I can give you some good news. I love it. When you get old enough, you finally get over it. Do you? Do you just not care anymore? <laughs> you just get to the point where it's like, it is what it is, take it or leave it. <laughs> I love that. I look forward to that. Did you have that at different times in your life? Oh, yeah. I had a lot of it because I was abused in mm-hmm. my childhood, and I certainly didn't know who I was and tried to be like everybody, tried to be like Dave, who's nice and calm, and my pastor's wife, who was sweet and merciful, and my neighbor, who could make her family's clothes and had a garden, and I tried it all, and before I finally got around to just being me yeah. and finding out who I was in Christ. And, you know, a lot of people still, it amazes me really how many people still don't understand mm-hmm. what that means. Well, let's start there because we've all talked about it on this podcast. You talk about it all the time, how this is 
very likely the most important thing right. you can grasp because you can't even understand salvation, who, who Christ is and yeah. what he's done for you without this knowledge. So what does it mean in Christ when you say that? Well, let me just first say that a large majority of churches don't even teach this. So hmm. I was in church for a lot of years before I knew who I was in Christ. And it's actually a phrase that's all over the Bible, especially in, in Paul's letters. Mm. And I have a thing on the Internet for anybody who wants to look it up called Knowing Who I Am in Christ. And I, don't, I think there's like 40 different things on here that the Bible actually says that we are in Christ. I won't read them all, but just for example, I am complete in Him. Mm -hmm. So let's just take an example like, say, um, a single girl um, is invited to something where she knows everybody's going to be married couples. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if she doesn't know who she is in Christ, then she can feel like she's really out of place. She right. doesn't belong there. She shouldn't be there. Something's wrong with me because I'm not married. But if she knows that she's complete in Christ, yeah. then she doesn't have to have a man to complete her. <laughs> She's yeah. complete in who she mm -hmm. is in him. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way, really, with, with anything, like even like what you were talking about, Aaron, about feeling unqualified yeah. to be here. Mm -hmm. You're qualified in him mm -hmm. because you made yourself available. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm alive with Christ. I'm free from the law of sin and death. I'm far from oppression, and I will not live in fear. I'm born of God, and the evil one does not touch me. And it's just, I mean, every one of these are just, absolutely beautiful yeah. and if you can really learn who you are in Christ and it really we're in Christ by faith when you receive Christ as your savior then you're considered to be in Christ and so if you're in something whatever that something gets you get mm -hmm. so we were considered to be in Christ when he died on the cross so when he died we died when he was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead. He took our sin. Yeah, he took our sin. When he ascended on high and was seated at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says in Ephesians that we too are seated at the right hand of mm -hmm. God. So literally, believers live in two places. We live here with our feet on the earth, but we're also living in heavenly places with Christ. And when you can really grasp how much he loves you and what he's done for you, and that he says he never will leave you nor forsake you. His thoughts toward you are more than the sands of the sea. You're made acceptable in him. And if you meditate on those things instead of what's wrong with you all the time, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, you know, then after a while, you get it. But it's amazing how many people that I talk to about knowing who you are in Christ, because that's the only thing that's going to keep you from being insecure. That's Either that so or you're going to try to get it through your career, mm -hmm, how much right. money you have, how you look what you wear, who you know, mm -hmm. and I'm done with all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through all that, and that's that's all just a bunch of fluff and air. You talk about something that's an imposter. Yeah, exactly. That is, because it says, come here, and I'll make you mm -hmm. complete. I'll, I'll make you secure. Mm -hmm. And then it fails you just when you need it the most. <laughs> it's really interesting, because when, when you Google knowing who you are in Christ online, your list pops up, and very few other things come up. Mm -hmm. You'll get a couple blogs from other people. Right. And I think that speaks to what you're saying. That's not a part of our culture. It's not. And people don't know to be taught or to learn who they are in Christ. I'll, I have a career, and I'm going to chase that, and I will figure it out there, or I'll be validated in this relationship. Mm -hmm. But we aren't taught often enough. And it's actually one of the most important foundational yeah. doctrines mm -hmm. that Paul taught who we are in Christ. Like, it, it, it takes hearing it over and over mm -hmm. and over really for Absolutely. it to sink in. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to listen to another way that Joyce explains it um, and one of her teachings, and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about it. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake he made Christ virtually, that means really, <laughs> to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him, we might become endued with, viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of God. What we ought to be approved 
and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Now, to be honest, you could take that one verse and study it for the next two weeks. And maybe if that's all you looked at for two weeks and thought about it and meditated on it, it might begin to start to sink on, sink in. Jesus took your sin because he's good, not because you're good. <laughs> he took the penalty. He took the punishment. And he gave you, <laughs> gave you his righteousness that he earned by never doing anything wrong. And it, we can't figure it out mathematically in our head, but the Bible says that if we believe that, <laughs> then God views us or he sees us as his very own righteousness because he sees us through Christ. He sees us. He doesn't see us in our old sinful state. He sees us as these new creatures that we are where inside, in our spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. So you have all this amazingly wonderful, good stuff on the inside of you. Now you still have a flesh too that has the sin principle in it. This is why after you become a really committed Christian, you sometimes feel that you're in a war all the time. Do you ever feel like you're two people? The thing I want to do, I can't do. The thing I don't want to do, I'm always doing. I mean, I can make such plans for holiness laying in bed. I mean, I'm not going to say anything wrong that day. I'm going to be so submissive and such a good wife, and I'm not going to talk back, and I'm going to be kind. I'm not going to gossip about anybody. I mean, I'm just, I am so good until I put my feet on the floor. Can't we all relate to that? <laughs> we make these wonderful plans for our own righteousness, yeah. and boy, I'm then so like perfect you said. before I get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Full of joy. So full yeah. of joy. So full Listen of joy. Listen to this one scripture. This just leaves your mouth hanging open and all. I am holy and without blame mm -hmm. before him in love. Okay, now let, let me ask you what is going through people's minds. I know better than that. I have messed up so many times. I'm not without blame. So how does that work for me well, see, in my imperfection? They're missing the two words. I am holding him without blame before him hmm. mm. in love. And that's what you have to look for. Every one of these, mm -hmm. I am complete in him. This has nothing to do with, right, with yeah. me. It's, I call it the divine exchange. He takes all of our badness and gives us all of his goodness. You know, he takes all of our sin Everything, and he gives us all of his goodness. Yeah. I, I liken it to when I married Dave. I always say, I didn't have a car, but he had a car. And as soon as he and I were married, suddenly I had a car. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, uh, But I make a point that I didn't have that while we were dating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was after I said I do. So some people are still just dating Jesus, mm. and they so need to get around to the... Yes, Lord. A full-on commitment. A full-on mm -hmm. commitment and uh, begin to walk in what's theirs. We're co-inheritors with him. Everything that he inherited from God, the Bible says that we're joint heirs with him, we get to. And so you either believe that or you believe how you feel. Mm -hmm. And I believe so how I— those are the two options. I believed how I felt and what I thought and what other people said about me for years and years, and all I was was miserable— and when I finally decided to believe the Word of God over how I felt and what I thought, then I started having some joy and some peace and beginning to enjoy my life. I really, I love that. I love the, the analogy of the car. Yeah. That just makes it so, so real. Right. You know, and I'm just walking into something these, this past couple of years, like where I'm really like grasping how wrong I had it. You know, <laughs> I thought I knew God and he, you know, I knew who I was, you know, but looking back and just reflecting when you asked earlier, you know, if I've ever dealt with that, I just, I've really taken these past couple of years to really do some life reflection, you know, right. to be like, what is up? Like, what, yeah. like, 
what are the good things, bad things? You know, what mm-hmm. can I work on right now? And just looking back, I realized how much of an imposter I've been the majority of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, I'm a pastor's kid, um, even though my relationship with my dad wasn't perfect, but I'm a pastor's kid. And I thought that that, that was my identity at first. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I went, I was, I was, you know, Pastor Vaughn's daughter. Like, that was my thing, you know? I was a worship leader. Then, um, but then going to a school where I was the only, one of the only black girls, like, in my school. And I look back at pictures of me even in high school where I had blonde hair Mm -hmm. I got blue contacts I didn't realize I didn't even realize I look crazy like I I, I didn't even realize I was I I wanted to fit in so badly that I even I have long I I, I still love braids don't get it wrong I got a couple blonde streaks in there ain't nothing wrong with that but I'm saying like I had a full head of blonde braids and blue contacts wanting to fit in so badly yeah. until the fact that even when I got I, when I got married, I became his wife, you yeah. know. And so now in this season of my life, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. I'm like, God, who am I for real? And I realized <laughs> wow. all that time, like I was I was dating God, but I was married to the other s- situations. Right. I was married mm. to my identity was in my father or who I looked like in school or what I did or the job I got, the degrees I got, the marriage. But now it's really, it was a reality check. And so when you brought that up, it just really struck something with Mm -hmm. me. Like I am so at a place now where I just want to be like one with him that, that the, that the car is now mine too. You know, like my identity is found in him, not in who I'm with or what I'm doing. How are you making that shift? Um, talking like this, being, mm-hmm. and, and actually <laughs> having those reality check moments to yeah. look back, taking that time to reflect, be like, girl, girl, you didn't, you, you're not this high and mighty, you know, like yeah. that's nothing. And nobody cares what you did. Nobody cares what you do. Like mm-hmm. it's about who you are with him and really just having those honest conversations with God and being honest with him and repenting and saying, God, you know what? I had it all wrong <laughs> and teach me, mm-hmm. just teach me what, the, what this looks like. And yeah. I'm, I'm almost feeling like, and it's hard at almost 40 now, like that I'm, I feel like I'm starting over in an extent yeah. and to an extent. And it's sure. not a bad thing. Um, and I'm encouraged by, by Joyce, like the fact that you talk about this stuff and I know that like, how old were you when you married Dave? And like, you realized. I'm 26. Oh, okay. So, but I'm saying, but like the, and when I hear, like how even I didn't you, realize it when I first married Dave. I gave him a lot of trouble for a long time because I didn't know who I was in Christ. Yeah. If you don't know, if you don't have your identity straight and know who you are, you normally put that off on other people. Mm, that's so true. And you want them to make you feel you good. You want them to make you whole. And, yeah. you know, I remember it was was a few years, but God told me He said, "Stop giving Dave the responsibility for your joy." I remember, I've heard you say that a couple of times, and I've always felt really annoyed by it because I'm like, that's what I'm doing, Aaron. I I am putting my feelings of myself on somebody else. Right. I have to take that back to God. You're not annoying. What you told me was hard because it's where I was. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. It's not easy. And you know, something that's important for people to know, no matter how old you are, the devil loves nothing better than to try to make you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just went through a period of, I don't know what it was, maybe a couple of weeks where I got focused on, um, you're not praying enough, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're not doing something else. And so clearly this morning when I first got up, I heard the Lord speak in my heart and say, I don't want you to think about anything this morning unless it's something good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And see, God actually wants us to have good thoughts about ourself in Him. Yeah, right. I'm creative in Him. I'm talented in Him. I'm forgiven in Him. I can do all things through Him. I'm complete in Him. And uh, if people feel like that's wrong, yeah, you know, we somehow or another we feel like it's holy to mm-hmm. think that you're a rotten, no good. You know, that that's what God wants, but He doesn't want that. Right. Yeah. It. He really can't do anything with us until we know who we are in Him. That's so beautiful. It it's beautiful to like own that. And I'm walking in that now. Mm-hmm. That when you ask like what what are some of the things that you're doing? Yeah. I'm doing that. I'm actually allowing myself to speak nice things about myself and not be defined by the things I've been through in my past that mm-hmm. that did identify that did define who I was for a season. Like right. it was it was my story. And yeah. I felt like you can't I didn't know myself past my story. You you're know? doing something really powerful, and, and what you're always teaching us is 
taking the power away from that imposter mm-hmm. through our own honesty and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Because that that imposter is what's out there trying to make everybody think everything's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, 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 I've got it all together. Everything is looking good over here. But when we can just be vulnerable and say, hey, I'm just guessing at this. Yeah. I'm walking with God and He's teaching me so many right. things, but I'm so far from perfect. Yeah. It takes the power away from that whole feeling of being imposter, an imposter, and it, it helps keep you in Christ. Mm-hmm. Because I think this this walk with Christ is definitely a bit of a in and out slippery <laughs> slope sometimes. We're never in and out of our relationship with Christ because what He did counts for everything. But I take steps forward and backwards mm-hmm. sometimes. Well, sure, your mind, the devil attacks your mind, the battlefield of the mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. He attacks your mind, and, and He does it to everybody. Yeah. And just about the time you think you've got it nailed down, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, then... He'll attack you, and you have to go back to the beginning. But I, it just came to me so strongly this morning what Paul said. One thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind Ugh. and pressing on to the things that are ahead. So every single day, his mercy is new, and he doesn't want us thinking about yesterday's mistakes. We're sorry for him. We wish we wouldn't have done it. But we'll probably do it again. And need forgiveness again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think before you can ever know who you are in Christ, I think you have to know who you're not in yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. So you you kind of have to, I like to say, come to the end of yourself. So it seems like God just has to stand back and let you try and fail, 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 until you finally realize, I can't do this. Yeah. I, can't, I can't live the Christian life. Mm-hmm. God's got to live it through me. It's easy to think when you're having a tough time, especially, um, to to almost put to doubt if God loves you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. For me, and y'all know I'm more like a practical person, I like to like make a list. I have to because sometimes when my mind starts to scatter and I start thinking about life and reality and future, it's like, you know, and um, and a lot of times I would always be like, what is a practical step to make me stop going crazy with my thoughts? Mm -hmm. You know, and number one was putting on the helmet of salvation Mm -hmm. because that helmet of salvation um, doesn't uh, stop me from thinking it, it just triggers me to think about what I need to think. Because those thoughts are going to come. It is not like a a magical hat that you can put on Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, it's all going on. I never think that. No, you're going to... No bad thoughts ever come. You're going to think bad thoughts, but you have to discipline yourself Mm -hmm. to remember thinking on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report. Think on these things. And for me, for a season, it was literally writing it down. Like I literally, I'll put post-it notes sometimes on my mirror just to force me to think on what I need to think about. I love that because this, this is a very spiritual thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So this helmet that we're talking about is not something we can see with our eyes, but Mm -hmm. is just as real. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it doesn't make the problems go away, but it's like the Holy Spirit covering your thoughts Mm -hmm. and you asking for Him to do that for you every day. And my helmet, you know, I've upgraded over the years. And so I also, you know, have this eye shield so I can see more what God wants me to see and not miss the stuff. I want to hear the way that God wants me to hear and and not hear things that I hear that are things like, you know, oh, they don't like me because of how I took what they said instead of maybe I hear hurt in their voice and I think about what they need, Mm -hmm. you know? And then the other thing mine has is a great big old mouth guard because I want to speak <laughs> the word of God yeah. and not all of That's the good. junk that could pour out of my mouth on uh-huh. my own. And I see the importance of it in in the way of looking at it like, I'm going to put sunscreen on, right? I can't uh-huh. see it when I put it on. It disappears Ooh, into my yeah. skin, but it's going to protect my skin from the sun. Yeah. And for me, you know, it's burning and breaking out in sun poisoning and all kinds of nasty little aging factors that I just don't want. So, <laughs> and, and the same like when I go hiking, I put on my hiking boots to protect my feet. Yep. Or after all that walking, you know, my feet are going to feel terrible, but they're just cozy and 
cloud-like in my hiking boots. So <laughs> I think about that with the full armor of God. Mm. It's it's the amazing fact that my God thought to include shoes for, for me. He's so kind. He's yep. so wonderful. Yep. He knows me so well. He knows how much I love great shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he included them in the full armor and the, the readiness of, of to spread the gospel of peace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, what could be better yeah. Then shoes of peace. Yeah. I another practical thing I did. I was googling lots this day when I was studying. So I I googled the definition of all those different pieces. Yeah. That you put on, and that's a really great thing to do. Just to like a word study. I love a good word study. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can't remember which one it was, and I'm trying to find it in here. But one of the things, one of these. Oh no, it was part of my Spartan study. But <laughs> they they talked about how the armor and the shield were buffed to a brilliant shine and glinted in the sun. So just <laughs> did, you, did you see her face? I know, I know. <laughs> so cute. I, I wanted to get Aaron's so face excited. just you. lit like, up. <laughs> but like I had this visual image of the fact that you know they're getting all their stuff ready and it's shiny. But like that's yeah. the whole point is for our armor to glint in the sun. Like you're right. That's what the point is, is that we're reflecting God in all we do and we cannot reflect him if we aren't putting on what he's given us. Let's say we don't put on the full armor of God. That's when I often feel very unprotected, Mm -hmm. you know, very vulnerable in a bad way, almost naked Mm -hmm. before everything that's out there. Because I'm trying to do it on my own, yeah. right? Yeah. I didn't take the time to invite God in, to ask Him to get me ready for the day, mm-hmm. to protect me and prepare me, which means I'm so prideful that I don't need any of that. I'm going to do it all on my own. And that is where my toes get stepped on yeah. and yeah. my heart gets broken and I'm thinking all the wrong things. And if we don't want to feel that nakedness mm-hmm. that we all feel so often, mm-hmm. this is a great way to combat that, yeah. to counteract it. Yeah. That's Truth good. moment. I I did not arm myself yesterday. I did not. I got busy. Hmm. Early in the morning, I got busy. And I even though I had my plan, I started, I did some of my things, but I did not pause to actually put all of my armor on. And... Throughout the day, I, I, it just slipped my mind. But at, like you said, I felt so incomplete. Mm-hmm. And those fiery darts of the enemy, they were piercing in different ways. Mm-hmm. And ha- like, had I done that, now you can't live in regret, but had sure. I done that, I probably, I was hit with some more blows. Like mm-hmm. this year will not stop with blows, you know? <laughs> and so I, this is why I say it's, it's, it's a necessity for me now. Like I have yeah. to put it on because if I don't, I don't know what blow I'm going to get right. day to day. Right. And so like that's not going to mm. stop the enemy from attacking, but me being prepared and ready yeah. is a necessity for me and I wasn't. And so I I didn't I didn't pass every test yesterday. <laughs> mm. I didn't because my emotions were on high because I was hit with some really heavy things. I'm like, "Oh, I thought I was just about to come over the hump." You know, you got to stay ready. Yeah. Like, you have to stay ready. So I encourage you. Yeah. It's a necessity. Mm-hmm. We don't mm-hmm. know the things that this armor is protecting us from. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many things that we will never know that God shielded us from. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so many things that we that we face that are going far better than they could have mm-hmm. because God is walking through it with us. Right. And this is such a gift that God gave mm-hmm. us that he's like, no, I've given you the authority to dress yourself. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it's not a legalistic thing. No, like if you all. do this, something, if you don't do this, right. something yeah. bad is going to happen. No, it's, it's not like it, that. No, you know, like I, I've, I've watched you when, when uh, Peyton dresses herself or, you know, is proud of something as a mama, you're like, look at her. The outfit could be awful. Terrible. But, but, she, <laughs> but you put your leg there all by yourself. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. Those, those frozen panties are backwards, yeah. but you did it. But they're you, on. They're on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, I'm saying like God has given us that that ability to dress ourselves because he loves us so much. He's like, hey, daughter, hey, yeah. son, you can dress yourself. And this is the outfit I've picked out for you. It's the best outfit and it'll protect you. So I think it's cool. There's a confidence that comes yeah. with knowing that you've dressed yourself in something that'll protect you. Yeah. The wonderful thing about putting on the full armor of God is no matter what comes, we're not fighting it on our own. 
That really is so comforting, knowing that we are not alone. No matter how much negative thoughts bombard us, God will never leave you. He's not going to say, I don't like what you just thought, so you're on your own. You can stop those negative thoughts. You can think about yourself in a healthy way. Now, did you hear me there? You can think about yourself in a positive, healthy word way according to what God's word says about you. You have to start doing that today. And you have the tools you need to do it. So pray, put on that full armor of God, practice and never give up. So let us help you to learn to use God's word to win the battle in your mind. We have a free resource for you that I think is going to help so much. It's an online study, which is really great. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out and sign up for the Battlefield of the Mind online study. You're going to dig into what this says. You're going to start feeling how God is working in your life. You're going to start seeing a difference and you're going to do it because you are into the Word of God, renewing your mind. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to share it with everyone you know. The more friends, the better. Join us next time and we will see you then. We love you. Go get today's resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes, get to know us a little better. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.